applying for relief. Your name? Charles Gordon. Your address? 13 Broom Street. Are you married or single? Single. Live with your father or mother? No. Who was your last employer? Never had one. Fill in this form. They used to tell me I was building a dream And so I followed them all When there was earth to plow or guns to bear I was always there, right there on the job They used to tell me I was building a dream With peace and glory ahead Why should I be standing in line Just waiting for bread Once I built a railroad, made it run Made it race against time I built a railroad, now it's done Brother, can you spare a dime? Once I built a tower to the sun Brick and rivet and line Once I built a tower, now it's done Brother, can you spare a dime? many of the working people of Canada, the Great Depression of the 1930s began well in advance of the historic stock market crash of 1929. For us, unemployment was already a fact of life. The crash of 1929 just made a bleak future look even bleaker. The Depression was a worldwide event. Few were left untouched. Jobs, homes were lost. Farms and businesses were lost. Well over one quarter of the country's workforce was unemployed and per capita income fell by 50%. In soup kitchens, flop houses and hobo jungles sprang up all across the country and freight trains loaded with unemployed going east passed freight trains loaded with unemployed going west. Yes, it was freight trains. Long, cold, hungry rides on boxcars oil tankers and tenders, and lumber cars, bumming the local butcher or baker at the back door for a meal. Hey, buddy, bowl of soup for a day's work, eh? Excuse me, sir. We're willing to work around the place. You know, anything you need done, if you can spare us some bread and let us sleep in the barn. Excuse me, man. Us guys would be pleased to clean up your yard. Ma'am, I'd sure be glad for something to eat. My name is Yan Ho. I came to Canada from Guangdong province in China. I've lived here for 12 years, and one thing's for sure. Hunger and poverty don't give a hoot what color you are. We paid a $500 head tax to come to this country. We built the railroads. We hauled the ore out of their mines. Thousands of us died. From the youngest of us, to old men who broke their backs all their lives. We suffer on a bowl of rice and a couple of rotten vegetables a day. Perry's the name, and unemployment's no game. Well, seriously, I've been out of work since 29. I'll tell you, you, you never think of marriage, a home, or having a family. It's become a way of life tramping the country. Every second man you talked to had spent time in jail, no money, no job, and no address meant vagrancy. And vagrancy meant jail. It seemed like there was a law to say you couldn't hang around and another to say you couldn't move. And no story of the Depression anywhere in Canada would be complete without a description of the conservative Tory government of the day. It was a government that will never be remembered for its generosity. Richard Bedford Bennett was the Prime Minister. 
better known as Iron Heel. He was a multimillionaire who had earned half his fortune as a corporate lawyer and inherited the rest. He always ate one pound of the very finest chocolates every day. He was the very essence of a conservative corporate capitalist, a sharp contrast to the ragged poor. Canadians, by their heroic achievements upon the battlefields of France and Flanders, made for our dominion a place amongst the nations of the world. They are now engaged in a struggle for the agricultural and industrial development of their country, believing that if afforded an equal opportunity with their competitors, they can provide employment for Canadians in their own country, supply in large measure our domestic requirements, and command a fair share of the trade of the world. He came to power in 1930 with promises to end unemployment or perish in the attempt, and to cure unemployment in six months. By 1931, one year after taking office, Bennett was forced to say, no one country can cure unemployment. So much for the six months cure. By 1932, Iron Hill had this to say, unemployment can only be cured through the grace of God. So much for perishing in the attempt. Iron Heel Bennett said, the government is not here to subsidize idleness. The provincial premier Patella had his own way of saying it. He simply said, root hog or die. I don't want, I don't want your millions, mister. I don't want your diamond ring. All I want is the right to live, mister. Give me back my job again. We work to build. This country, mister, while you enjoyed your life of ease, you've stolen all that we built, mister. Now our children starve and freeze. I don't want, I don't want your millions, mister. Eventually, the government was forced to respond to a growing crisis. A mean, stingy, degrading sort of relief was set up for destitute families called gunny sack parades. You stood in line publicly for hours with your own gunny sack to receive just enough food scientifically measured to keep you and your family alive for one week. But not for all the family. If you were 17 and older, you no longer qualified as a family dependent. So you end up working as a domestic. My name is Nora. I made only $5 a month, was expected to work every day except for Thursday afternoon, and made to sleep in a room in the attic. The woman made me eat in the kitchen. She would stand in the doorway and talk to me and then say, I don't know why I'm talking to you, you're only the maid. But she let me look after her kids. And the master, he liked me too much. I got away from him every time, but finally I told the lady I was leaving town and had to quit. But I didn't tell her why. I don't know, I guess I felt sorry for her. So she screams at me for leaving without notice. This is my house my father built. I was seven years old and my mother and I were being evicted. 
and deportations grew. Whole families who had come to this country to start a new life and thought it was rich and bountiful were sent packing. 7,000 were deported in 1933, many for political reasons. John here. You know it's bad all over. My sister's married to an Italian sailor. Nice guy. And they have two kids. So there's no work and this guy goes down to the relief office because the kids are hungry and crying. My sister's at her wit's end. And the next thing you know, he's deported. So she goes to the relief and they say that she can't get any relief because she's not white. And then they tell her that she can't get support under the Department of Indian Affairs because she married a white guy and lost her status. Oh, she's going out of her tree at this point. Men who've been here for 30 years are given deportation notices. I knew Sing Chong Lu from the mining camps. He hung himself. They charged him with attempted suicide and refused relief to his family. I will not starve, and I will fight if they deport me. About this time, the Single Unemployed Workers Association was formed. It was a beehive of activity every day and most of every night. All sorts of committees were selected. Committees to fight for relief, committees to fight for medical attention, committees to help fight evictions. Flying pickets from the single unemployed could carry furniture back into a house faster than the bailiff could carry it out. Single unemployed, organized and mobile seemed to be everywhere. Many had come to Vancouver because it was the only place where you could come and starve to death before you froze to death. Have you seen the Anglican Mission Soup Kitchen over there on Kiefer Street? Woman has it. They boil up an old shoe and serve it as soup. We should be eating fresh vegetables and meat for the amount of money they get from the government. But they act like we should thank them. What choice do we have? No pensions or relief camps just because we're Chinese. Kiu Jing Fu, Bei Yang Olesek. Kiu Jing Fu, Bei Gong Zhou. Kiu Jing Fu, Bei Ngo Li Di Ga Ting Gao Ye Sek. As an individual, you won't get nowhere on your own. <laughs> 